Live from the campus of MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering the MIT Chief Data Officer and the Information Quality Symposium. Welcome back, this is theCUBE. We're wrapping up our first day of coverage here at the MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. It's been a busy day, it's been a day of variety. We've, we've had uh, two CDOs on our program today and, and also a CIO talking about the, uh, the roles and responsibilities. We have had uh, some technology talk about Hadoop and data lakes. We've talked a lot about the value of information, understanding uh, what, quality, what value data quality has to an organization, also just to value data in general. We've talked actually very little about technology. Uh, really, our first technology topic wasn't until almost the end of the day. We've talked mostly about uh, how data fits strategically within a framework for an organization uh, to give it competitive advantage and, and how organizational um, thinking is evolving uh, toward giving data the same kind of value that we attach to, uh, to uh, machines and, and even to people. Um, with me is, um, uh, my colleague Stu Miniman, a Wikibon analyst, and Wikibon analyst uh, George Gilbert uh, on the big data side. Uh, you both were out and about uh, in some sessions today uh, doing interviews here on theCUBE. What were the top takeaways you came away, away with, Stu? Yeah, Paul, so I uh, you know, want to reiterate what you talked about is a lot of this, it was business processes, kind of mandate from the business side of things, not so much the technology itself. Uh, and we heard over and over again, you know, technology's too complex. You know, we, we've talked for you know, decades about silos. Uh, There's a great line from, uh, I think it was Peter Wang from Continuum said that, uh, you know, maybe we might not get rid of the uh, uh, the, the silos, but if we can get above the water level, we'll uh, we, we, we yeah. won't. Uh, it will submerge them or anything like that. Uh, a couple of CDOs. I love the uh, uh, the Department of Transportation CDO talking about uh, you know, really the government open mandate. Um, so, so some really interesting discussions here about uh, the value of data moving forward. Uh, you know, not just bits that you know sit somewhere, uh, and uh, you know, nice maturation about how the technology uh, is helping to help businesses with their digital transformation. Right, George. What did, what did you take away? So if I if I had to um, distill it down, I would say um, we're in this sort of historical point where we're pivoting from era of software to an era of data. And there's just there's this one great anecdote that sums it up. Uh, the founding, um, the founding uh, director of the MIT Media Lab, Nick Negroponte, once said he had to send his laptop through the airport screening machine and they asked him, you know, is this worth more than $3,000? And he looked and he was like, it's worth three million if you look at all the information I've got on it. And sort of that, you know, it's a great example of separating the value of the data or information sort of from the underlying infrastructure. Um, but if you take this to a much more tactical and mundane level, the CDO today, the chief data officer, is very much like the um, CIO 20 years ago. And then it had to do with software. The CIO had these incredible demands for applications and modifications that are coming in from the end user community. And so essentially they got to use Microsoft Office and that was how they were sort of turned into a self-service um, uh, population. Now the chief data officer has tons of requests on, I need different cuts of data. And so they're being satisfied with a data lake that has guardrails. The guardrails are really immature, but basically what they do is they make sure that whatever the end user does to the data, um, it does it within the context of what's permitted in terms of security, in terms of transformation. Um, and that's how you balance the competing interests. Because you can't, the, the CDO on its own can't satisfy all the demand and, and the sort of end users on their own can't sort of provision all the data and keep it yeah, correct. I think it's an important point. We heard uh, several of our guests today talk about data ownership and the importance of investing data ownership in the organization. And as we swell to, I think IDC predicts by 2022 or so, we're going to be generating uh, uh, f four and a half, 44 exabytes of data. It's just, it's just unbelievable amounts of data every year. Uh, you can't 
possibly get your arms around that. You've got to make everyone a self-service telephone operator, as, as the uh, AT&T um, precursor showed. Uh, but, but getting people to take control of quality of data is, is a different thing. I mean, this is still, it's hard to maintain data quality. Is this a, uh, a transition you think is going to be a transition that's fraught with difficulty and, and perhaps even resistance on the user side? Yeah, I, I mean, we've been talking about you know getting proper metadata. Uh, you know, how do we make sure we don't just have you know? We, we know we have data everywhere, but you know, data just way too many copies all over the place. Um, we heard a couple of companies here uh, that are try trying to help solve that problem, but uh, you know, it, it's holistically, uh, it, it sounds like. Uh, you know, as we've seen forever, all these new technologies tend to be additive, so uh, they don't need to, you know, we, we've got so much technical debt out there um, that, uh, you know, I, I haven't heard anything that's really solving uh, the, the holistic problem. Um, we're, we're, but the good news is we're focusing on some of the business challenges and, and giving some of the tools in place, as George said, to, to allow things to be a little bit more self-service so that I can have access to the data I need. Uh, and hopefully if I can have time, I can uh, take advantage of, uh, of that information. But as we heard from a number of companies, uh, it was interesting on the government side, are you worried about the security? And they said, nope, we make everything open and nobody has time to look at, you know, what crap they've got in their data swamp today. So if you throw more stuff in there, they're probably not going <laughs> to, you know, look too much into it. So uh, it, it's uh, as Dave Vellante always says. Sometimes you put everything out there and kill me with that problem. That we're going to ask get asked too many questions. <laughs> now we worry too much in advance about what uh, about releasing information when in fact the vast majority of the time it doesn't make any difference. Your your take on the user ownership issue, George. Um. You know, following up on, on what Stu said, um, if you look at the guys who are trying to answer IT's problem or the chief data officer's problem, they speak an entirely different language. I mean, they could be pygmies for all we're concerned, you know, relative to the, the guys who are using uh, Tableau and Alteryx and Paxata, the ones that are trying to work with the data. Um, and. I don't think we're going to find someone who bridges both sides anytime soon. So, um, I guess the idea is we're going to have to we're going to have to put lanes on the highway, and you're going to have to stay in your lanes. Um, the, the most compelling, sort of all encompassing encompassing vi vision that I heard so far, um, though it wasn't here today, was Teradata, who of all you know people were represented um, sort of central IT, and their idea was, look, we used to have this curated data garden called the data warehouse, and we put it all in there in this very rigid format, and if you didn't like it, you know, tough. Now they use the data lake to say, just pour in what were silos of data, and then iteratively add the structure to it, and we'll make sure that it doesn't get lost or corrupted or anything like that. Yeah, that seems to make a lot of sense. Just quickly, because we're almost out of time here. One thing we didn't we that, that didn't get a lot of discussion today was the role of the CDO. In fact, that whole issue of the CDO versus the CIO uh, was kind of shoved to the side. And certainly, our panelists here from GlaxoSmithKline indicated that it's not an issue whether these two roles are are uh, at odds with each other. In fact, is that a non-issue? Should we not be worrying about where organizationally the CDO fits in the organization? Yeah, I mean, I love the line from GSK when I asked him about, uh, you know, you know, are you the innovation owner and in, uh, something, uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, CIO, uh, you know, just really kind of runs the old legacy stuff. He's like, that's a great headline for a magazine, but it's really not the truth. You know, we're a big organization. We don't talk every day. We've all got kind of our, our, our roles and responsibilities there, but in a big company, it's not an issue. Uh, we've got a few more CDOs on, on the program tomorrow. Uh, I, I think it's, it's you know, Paul, you, you've talked about it. As these roles mature, uh, we kind of understand how they fit in the organization a little bit better. You know, you know, how many decades ago was it, well, hey, is the CIO going to be a role that sticks around? Exactly. Well, we're, we're still seeing, you know, you know, CDO, uh, it, it's kind of finding its place in the organization, where it sits with the CISO, where it sits with the CIO, um, who it reports to, it's going to vary a little bit. And uh, I, I liked what I heard with the Institute for C Chief Data Officers, that they're going to help uh, get a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, definition you know, a definition and, you yeah. know, put a definition out there and a job description that like 100 CDOs are going to help craft and they're going to start to have more training and, uh, you know, it, it's not a one-size-fits-all, but uh, it, it is, we are seeing some good maturity here. 
That we are out of time. Uh, that's going to have to be a wrap. Come back tomorrow. We've got Tom Davenport in, uh, tomorrow morning. He is keynoter at the event. Great speaker. Uh, I think you're going to find him a very provocative guest. We've got three CDOs on the uh, agenda for tomorrow and uh, our, our usual uh, uh, assortment of surprise guests. Uh, I think you'll find a lot to uh, a lot to build upon the foundation that was laid today. Uh, so that's a wrap for the Cube from the CDO IQ conference at MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Paul Gillen saying so long for myself, my partner Stu Miniman, and George Gilbert. We'll see you tomorrow. Hi, this is Chris Devaney from Data Robot. My name is Nench.